You're listening to the Back Home Network, presented by Homefield Apparel. Well, tomorrow, the last time we talked, Indiana was 5-0 and heading into Thanksgiving. And since then, you guys beat Marshall. You lost that heartbreaker to Syracuse. You opened Big Ten play with a home win against Nebraska that featured a little scoop explosion there in the first half. And then you lost another heartbreaker at Wisconsin. Um, and I want to dig into some of the details of those games and kind of your role in them and how you're thinking about that. But big picture, how are you feeling right now with where you guys are at so far this season? Um, I'm, I feel like we're... You know, we were at a good spot just because, I mean, it's still early. And, you know, with those losses, like, we that's not the way, you know, I personally like to look at them. And and that's not how the um the rest of the team likes to look at them. Like, we like to learn from those experiences and, you know, understand that, you know, we can compete on the road. Like, we were showing that. We just had to make sure we're making the right plays down the stretch and um, just making more plays than the other team. But I, I feel like we're at a – um. We're in a good spot. Obviously, I mean, we got to keep working and do our part as players because the coaches are they they on us. But I mean, we, you know, try to keep it, you know, uh, like a, a player led team. But, you know, like I said, you know, we just got to continue to work and, you know, just and just learn from, you know, those losses. Well, you've seen the coaching staff now after a couple of losses, which you hadn't before when we talked. How would you characterize their response to those losses? Because, I mean, there were stretches of good play in both of those games but then obviously stretches a bad play. Like right. what did they kind of focus your attention on afterwards? Well, I mean, the, the preparation, like it's always the same, like whether we just came off a loss or a win. So we always want to, you know, make sure we're completely focused on the task we have at hand. But I mean, now, I mean, we just got to, like, like I said, we just got to focus on making sure we're making the right plays down the stretch, you know, especially on the road. You know, when you got a team going on a run, you know, we, we don't just want to get a good shot. We want to get a great shot. So on the offensive end, we want to make sure we're adjusting to, you know, the way they plan us and, you know, how they're guarding, you know, what like what we're trying to do and what we're trying to exploit. So, I mean, it's really just going back and watching film and seeing what we could do better. Because, I mean, a lot of the times, like, it's not like the other team beats us. I mean, it's us beating ourselves, really. So, yeah. you know, we just got to make sure we clean up some of those mistakes. Obviously, we want to make sure we're taking care of the ball because the more shots we get, we got a better chance of winning the game more possessions we have. So, I mean, the, the, the preparation, like I said, is always, you know, at a high level. And, you know, with those losses, it had, it, it, it adds some more motivation just because it's like, you know, they're, they're, we, we lost the game and now we had to respond. So that's where we were. What is – Turnovers have obviously been a big issue, you know, so far this season. Um, and you certainly were better against Wisconsin from a turnover perspective. What does that look like in practice in terms of the coaches holding you accountable from a turnover perspective? I know Woody, you know, Coach Woodson has talked about, you know, he has a certain number in mind, like 12, and then you guys have to run, you know, if you go more than that number. What, you know, what are the punishments if you go over it in a game and like just in the middle of practice? Like, what are the coaches doing to make sure that you guys are emphasizing ball security? I mean, it's not really too much like they can like do or say. I mean, they just have to like stay on us to make sure that we're treasuring the ball. Like, yeah, we we just got to realize that that's like a it's like a piece of gold almost. It's like you don't want to lose that. Like you want to you want to keep that in your possession for as long as possible. Like we have thirty seconds to score, but you know, I mean, they they just they they stay on us about that because you know we're, we're we're a much better team when we take care of the ball and we get shots, like, and that's like, that's the goal. Cause we're going to defend. We got to make sure we're getting our possessions, you know, when we get stops and, and we're scoring the ball. Yeah. So let's go back into a few of these games. Um, and let's start with the Syracuse game. Had you ever played in a dome like that before? No, nah, that was my first time. And I, like, I just like, I didn't even realize that that's like, we're like, every, they, that's where everybody plays. Like, I didn't realize that until like two weeks before the game. I'm like, oh, yeah, like, like they play in a dome. Like, so like it's, I mean, it was nice though because I mean, it's a lot of history in that building, and you know, that's a place that you know a lot of great players have played. And but, no, nah, that that was my first time playing in a dome. Do you, you know, you've been shooting really well, and that was kind of the one game, you know, recently where you haven't shot well. You were 0 for 4 from downtown. You know, had that one late that just kind of like rattled out. 
Yeah. I always found it more difficult to shoot in a dome because the background, you know, is just so much kind of, you know, further away and it took me a while to adjust. Did you like, did that play into it at all for you? Was that even a factor, um, you know, playing in the dome or did it not affect you? I mean, I don't think it did, but the numbers uh, beg to differ. So, I mean, I mean, I, I wasn't really like, I, I didn't think my depth perception was off like too much. I mean, but I mean, it just was one of those nights where my shot wasn't falling. So, I mean, I mean, it's not really too much to it. I mean, it's like, I, I, I thought everyone was good. Like, I, I mean, I thought a lot of them like were good. I mean, I look up ball hitting the backboard and, but I'm, but now, nah, um, I didn't, I didn't think, um, like it, it threw me off too much. What was it like playing against their zone? Cause we hear all the time about how it's so much different cause you don't face it and their length. Like, was it a big adjustment for you playing against that type of defense? Oh, I mean, it, it was, it was definitely different. Cause I mean, we're used to playing against man to man defense and then they made some adjustments in their zone as well. Like it, it wasn't just a regular two, three. And like, as we've seen them continue to play games, they have kind of stuck to that. It, it's kind of like a, it looks like a one, three, one, when you come across half court, like the two guards are in the tandem and they're like break off, but sometimes they like they they wouldn't and uh, the guard on the backside would stay in the middle so i mean it was just us having to go to the drawing board go in at halftime and make adjustments and obviously we um attacked the zone a lot better in the second half yeah but, i mean it was just about us making adjustments and then just being patient with the ball like and not panicking because like a lot of the stuff like you get a lot of wide open shots in that zone so we just had to calm down and make the right reads yeah you know, in a game like that, I mean, it's a double overtime game, so many swings. There's so many plays throughout the game that, you know, that contribute to the to the outcome. But obviously, a lot of focus gets paid to the final play. And so, and I want to get your thoughts on that final play, because we spent a lot of time talking about it on the postgame show. You know, that final defensive play, Gerard gets the ball, Christian's guarding him, and you come over for the double. And then Gerard ends up throwing it back to the guy that you were guarding. They kind of do a little give and go, and then he ends up going and getting fouled. What was your thought process when you went over to double? Was that your decision to do? Was that the play from the sideline? Like, just kind of walk me through how that all developed. I mean, I, I'm not going to, like, speak too much on it just because, like, it was kind of like – that was just, like, a player, like, a coach thing. And, like, me me and Coach Wilson, like, we're – like, trying to – like, we, we had talked, like, right before that possession. But, I mean, that – I mean, it's kind of like just because it's over with, yeah. we're not even going – might even gonna like dwell on it, but I mean, I more say just so uh, it's like a miscommunication, like with me, like on my end. But like, like I said, like when things like that happen, like in the the um the game comes down to a final play, you know, and being a freshman and being in in that moment, I, I learned a lot from that. So yeah, you know, it's it's a blessing and a curse, but you know, I feel like I um. I learned more than I like than I lost from that moment. Yeah, that's good. Well, I mean, look, you know, the next thing that you did after that was come out in the first half against Nebraska and have one of the best stretches that you've had. And I, I would love to get your mindset as you're checking in to that game, you know, because the Syracuse game, the starters played a ton of minutes. You know, they had most of the production. And then, you know, it's an emotional loss. You come out in the Nebraska game and they're flat, you know, and you guys are losing. But the bench came in and you guys provided a huge spark, you know, and you had 11 points, you know, hit a bunch of threes in the first half. Really important and kind of turning that game around. What was your mindset like, you know, when you're when you're checking in and you guys are losing? Well, I mean, my first thing, like before I check into the game or like when I know that time is getting closer to where I'm checking in the game, I'm like. Like I'm watching, so I'm like seeing like what's going on, like who's playing well, who's making shots, and at that time, I, like you said, we came out flat. So I mean, I'm just like, I need to provide some kind of spark because I like if I come in the game and I'm flat too, then what was the point of subbing me in? So you know, my, my mindset was just to make sure I'm picking my spots, getting stops, and then turning defense into offense, and that that's like what me and and Lil tried to do, and just making sure we were getting stops and running, and you know, we were able to make some shots and get back in that game. But I mean, my mindset was just to make sure we got to halftime with the lead and it has some good things to talk about. Yeah, well, and you did, you know, and then obviously you guys were able to 
to get the win in the second half. You know, we saw, I think it was in the pre, there was a video that, uh, that the Indiana basketball account posted. I think it was before the Nebraska game where Coach Woodson is talking about, you know, basically, look, we have to protect Assembly Hall. No one comes in here and gets a victory. How much, I mean, you know, I remember, shoot, growing up being an Indiana fan when Indiana won like 50 straight games at Assembly Hall. It was just like, no one comes in here and wins, and that hasn't been the case over the last few years. How much has that been stressed, you know, and how important is that to you, you know, protecting the home court? I mean, that that's like the most important thing going into the home games. It's like, you know, about to let somebody come in here and like, beat us first of all and then we got our fans behind us so it's like it we just don't want to let it happen i mean and i mean obviously like it's a lot easier to play at home or i don't know i mean i, I wouldn't say it's like easier or harder to play at home or on the road but i mean i mean coming to the game i mean every day like leading up to it and the day of the game like you say like right before you went out you know coach Wilson going like he, he's not going like switch up what he's saying. Like he, he knows what he, the message that he wants to communicate with us. And that's that we protect home court. So. If you're an entrepreneur, business owner, or marketer, you know how much your messaging matters. Bob Knight said, all of us learn to write in the second grade. Most of us go on to do greater things. And coaches write about some writing, but not copywriting. The kind of writing that grows your business through memorable messaging and marketing. Any business can dominate the competition and win big with a world-class copywriter crafting time-saving and money-making emails, landing pages, ads, and more for you. Clay Manley from Speakeasy Sales Copy is one of the world's best, and he lends his talents to small businesses. Clay is an IU alum and an award-winning writer whose words have been trusted by Marvel, Slim Jim, Petco, and many other household names. After getting sick of helping the rich get richer, he left corporate copywriting to focus on helping small businesses grow. If your business could benefit from stronger messaging, then contact Clay at clay at speakeasysalescopy.com. And as a listener of the show, you can sample his proven playbook of million dollar messaging secrets for free. Just go to speakeasysalescopy.com slash scoop for more. That's speakeasysalescopy.com slash scoop. This could be your banner year, and your copy is the X Factor. Contact Clay at Speakeasy Sales Copy today. You know, it's funny, you know, different guys respond differently to different environments. You know, some players obviously really get juiced up by the home crowd, but when they go on the road and it's a, a more hostile environment, they struggle with it a little bit. You haven't yet, well, actually have been on the road against Wisconsin, and, and that's a hostile environment. There will be more. What's your mindset in those cases? Because, I mean, you seem to me, just based on what I know of you from these conversations and watching you play, you know, you've kind of got that confidence that you might be a guy that can go on the road in a hostile environment and kind of take all that in and respond well to it. <laughs> you know, like, how do you how do you anticipate that going as you guys go into more and more hostile environments? Well, I mean, on the road, I mean, I just try to keep an even kill mindset, like, because, I mean, just like when we're at home, like, even if we down or it's a close game that we're going to make a run because we got our crowd with us. Like you, you know, it's like we at home. So I know like the other team, the other coaches, they got the same mindset. So, I mean, it's just like not getting too high, not getting too low, you know, just like I said, like having an even kill mindset throughout the whole game and, you know, just making sure that, you know, we're getting great shots, taking care of the ball and, you know, getting stops. But I don't know. I mean, my, my mindset on the road, I mean, it's just to like just kill because I mean, it's not really any pressure on us to do anything because it's like we just the other team, that, like it, like we not here with our fans. So it's like we just we, we just we hooping. Like, we just playing basketball, trying to come out here and get a dub. So I what's mean, better hitting a hitting a three pointer that like juices up the momentum at home? Or coming down and hitting a three pointer when an opposing arena is loud and you can silence them. It got to be hitting the three on the road. That it's like, it's like, because like they, they they get loud. Like and obviously, I I think like we had the best fans in the country. So it's like I never really get too like rattled by like the noise that the other crowds make. But you you hit a three like when they like let let's say they score, you come back down. They like. They chanting defense, or they just like everybody's screaming, everybody's standing up. 
and you hit a shot, make everybody sit down. And they all quiet now. And they ain't even no point in like doing this and that because I'm like, I'm not every, <laughs> obviously like every possession is important, but we're trying to win the game. So yeah. Yeah. I would say hitting a, any shot on the road. Cause I mean, and then that that gives you your team like a little bit more uh a, a more sense of uh comfort just because it's like, okay, made a shot, we got a basket, let's go get a stop. It's not like you know, we slowed down their momentum a little bit. So yeah, yeah. I, I would say on the road. You know, you've had a chance now to play two Big Ten games, and obviously now you have some more non-conference games coming. What kind of differences have you noticed in style of play, pace of play, physicality in the two Big Ten games as opposed to the other games that you've played? Has there been a big difference? Well, it's definitely more physical. And then, you know, teams are, I mean, being that we're in conference play, they know, like, our players and they're going to scout us as, excuse me, you know, scout us as best as they can. So I would say that's the biggest difference, just, you know, teams – scouting and having different defenses because like when we were playing the other games like like Marshall like they let Trace go one on one the whole game or like some teams are like just have a soft trap they're not really trying to push him out or they're not like disrupting as much so I mean I would say the biggest difference is just um you know playing and, and guarding like our scout and then playing against the scout that the other team has so speaking of Big Ten play, let's talk a little bit about the Wisconsin game. I'm curious how aware you were of the history going into that game and how long it's been since Indiana has won in Madison, which I all week called the dumbest losing streak in Indiana history because uh, it's just, you know, it's over 20 some years. Were, were you guys aware of that? Like, was that talked about at all or is that just more of a fan thing? Yeah, I mean, we talked about it and I like didn't know like the exact number. I was like, you know, I, I don't. I didn't really care what the number was. I was just trying to, we were trying to like just go and end it. And, you know, we, we came up short, but yeah, we were aware of it, but I mean, it's not, it wasn't like, it's not like that was like the only thing we were thinking about during the game. Like we had other things to worry about, but yeah, yeah we, we were aware of it coming into it. Well, it's not like you guys have been there for all of them. Us fans yeah, have been not, there for all of them, but you know, it's kind of irrelevant to you what happened 20 years ago. Um, but what was the mood like after that game? You know, because it's such a swing to be up 22 and then to lose a game like that. Like, how, how are you guys feeling about that after the game? And is that something where, you know, is, is the focus afterwards more on kind of the collapse and the disappointment of the second half? Or is there some kind of solace or positivity taken by you guys from how you played in the first half? I mean, it's, it was really just a like a back to the lab mindset because like we we lost that game. So, I mean, it wasn't really either like one of those. I mean, it was just like, you know, we got to we got to get back to work because obviously we had some things to work on if, you know, we couldn't um, finish that one out. So, you know, we, we just got to get back to work, you know, get back to practice and the, all the guys get back around each other. And, you know, we you know, we band together because, I mean, I was like, since I got here, I've been curious to see how, you know, the entire team, the staff was going to respond after a loss. And, and after this one being a tough one, you know, um, I'm intrigued to see how we respond. I think we'll respond the right way. Yeah. Well, that's really interesting that you say that, you know, because it's so easy to talk about how good chemistry is and how well everybody's getting along and how hard everybody's working in the off season and when things are going well. But you're right. You never really know until you lose a couple games. I mean, how... How would you describe the kind of the reaction so far to those two losses? You know, does it seem like the kind of thing that's kind of pulling everybody together and making people work harder? Or is it something that you feel has it all kind of dented the confidence that you guys had, you know, before those games? I would say the level of focus is raised. And that's just a credit to the vets on the team, like the guys who have like been through like losing stretches. And that's and by any means, that's what we're going to do everything in our power to um, prevent. But. I would just say the older guys on the team, you know, guiding us and, you know, making sure that we're, you know, well aware that it's a long season, you know, it's early in the season right now. And, you know, like I said, we just got to continue to learn and, you know, and just, and get better and, you know, and take practice, you know, as serious as possible. And that's the vibe I've been getting from the guys. And that's, it gives me a lot more confidence knowing that, um, you know, coming 
in the practice or, you know, shoot around, whatever we got going, you know, guys are going to be focused just because, you know, they know we got to go out there and win games. Yeah. You know, so speaking of games, you guys just played, I think, four games in 13 days after Thanksgiving, and now the schedule is much more relaxed. I think you have three games over the next 18 days um, before you guys, uh, before Christmas. What do you kind of prefer? Do you like having a bunch of games stacked close together, or do you like the time with more practice and recovery in between? Um, I mean, this is like the, since this is going to be like the first stretch with like more days in between. Excuse me. I, I'll um, see which one I like more, but I don't know. I mean, I, I like, you know, pl- like just like playing games and, you know, having to have a short term memory because we got to, you know, got another team to prepare for. But, you know, uh, we, we just going to take it a game at a time. And I mean, we know we got days in between to prepare and practice, but, you know, yeah, this we gonna take it one day at a time. I mean, that was the message from the, since the beginning of the season. Support for the inside scoop is also presented by Home Field Apparel, the presenting sponsor for the Back Home Network. And our friends at Home Field Apparel, they have the widest and most extensive collection of vintage IU apparel that you will find anywhere. And as I'm sure you've come to know, it's not just IU. They started with IU stuff and the Bison logo that kind of took everybody by storm. And they just did a brand refresh, so they keep adding to their IU collection. But they're also adding other schools like crazy. They have, I think, 120 schools now. And so as you're looking to shop for yourself or for the IU fan in your life, or even folks who didn't go to Indiana, Home Field Apparel is the place to go for excellent fitting, ridiculously comfortable, washable, vintage gear that really makes a statement uh, about your fandom. And so go to homefieldapparel.com, use the promo code HOME, H-O-M-E, to get 15% off your first order. That's homefieldapparel.com, promo code H-O-M-E. Now, back to the inside scoop. You know, the other thing that the Syracuse game and the Wisconsin game kind of gave you your first experience of, at least at Indiana, is going on the road in the middle of the week, you know, all the travel and kind of the disruption to your routine and especially your academic routine. How's that adjustment been? And how, how have you kind of managed, you know, to, to do that and still stay up with all of your other responsibilities outside of just being a basketball player? Well, in a second trip, like my routine got better because, I mean, I didn't, I didn't know what the routine was on the first trip. So, I mean, I'm, I'm starting like to get one now just because we got another road trip and we got a lot more left. So, I mean, it's, it's a little easier to get everything done. Like with just with experience, just with, you know, having more than one road trip and, you know, being able to figure out, you know, something I could do to make sure my approach is the same to the game as if we were in Bloomington. Yeah. Are you, are you enjoying your classes so far? Are you enjoying the school part of, yeah. of being at IU? Yeah. I mean, I, I'm, I'm in some classes that like, that I like actually like enjoy like things that I'm like, um, I like, actually interested in. And I mean, it's like some of the classes are like, just like things that like classes that freshmen like just have to take. Yeah. So, I mean, like, it's a few that like, it's like, all right, let's just go get a good grade. But <laughs> yeah. But now that, you know, as, time goes on, I'll be able to um, get into some classes that um, like that pique my interest. Do you have a pretty good idea of what you want to major in or kind of what areas of study um, you want to focus on? I was like, like coming into it, like I was thinking about like business, like the Kelly School of Business, but I don't know. I mean, I still got time to um, try and pick something, but I don't know. I mean, I, I might want to do something like based around music, like music production or something, but really? Yeah, I, I'll figure it out. I mean, I, I got I got a little time. Well, business and music, those are a couple of schools that Indiana is pretty well known for. So you got some you got some good options there. So what what interests you in music? I'm curious about that. Like, do you want to be the person behind the mic or you want to be the person behind the board producing? I want to be the, like the producer or even like they like. Like the, 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 the top dog, like the executive, like at a whole label type, but mm-hmm. I like, I just like music. Like that, that's something that, that's something that I've always been able to, like just, I don't know, been like some kind of like a escape, something that's like eases my mental. But I mean, I want to like know what goes into like making a song, an album, an EP, like whatever, like whatever it is, just like who does the work behind the scenes. 
Yeah. So I, w- I would want to like produce the music. If someone came to you right now and said they were going to invest like $20,000 in the, in the scoop record label, which of your teammates would you tap first to be on your label? Cause Parker, he's Parker's done some music, right? He still 1000%. Yeah. yeah. Does anybody, is anybody else musically inclined like he is on the team? Uh, Big Mike, he he can he can rap a little bit. He, um, can he? Yeah, he got on one of uh, Peace Dude's songs. They still got to finish it, I'm pretty sure. But yeah, Mike, being from Atlanta, I mean, that's like they got a lot of rappers that come out of there. But yeah, yeah, he, yeah Mike, he's musically inclined as well. Man, speaking of Mike, you know, it was really nice in the Wisconsin game to see him kind of get in and start to see what he can do. Because, you know, you knew from his track record at South Florida that he's a guy who can produce. Just feels like it's taken him a little while to get going. What was it like for you guys to see him get out there and start to show some of his skills? I mean, that was a big time. I mean, I was like, I was beyond happy for him just because, like you said, like he hasn't really had like that time just to catch a flow in the game. And and we like we're going to give him the ball because we know he can go to work down there. But you know, the fact that he had more time just to, you know, get to his spots and where he was comfortable and shoot shots that he shoots every day. So, I mean, I, I was proud of him. You know what I mean? And hopefully just like from off of that performance, you know, he'll get more opportunities to um, showcase what he can do. And he can shoot the ball, right? I mean, yeah, that's good. Well, like the three, you gotta have good shot like two, three games ago. Like I thought he, I thought it was good. Like cause I've seen him make that before. Yeah. Like he, like, he can actually shoot. So, but nah, yeah, yeah. He, he, he played good. So, you know, obviously you got a couple more games and then holiday break. Are you going to be, you guys going to be able to go home for a little while over the holidays? Yeah, a couple of days. Yeah. Do you guys, does your family have any like fun holiday traditions that you guys do year in, year out? I mean, I don't know if they implemented something last year when I missed Christmas, but <laughs> I mean, no, nothing really too crazy. I mean, we'll get up, like open the gifts and. You know, my mom's are probably cooking and like just watch Christmas movies and all that. Just, just all be around each other. Like just all be together. Really, I mean that's. I guess you guys don't all have like matching pajamas or anything that you wear on Christmas Day. Nah, we yeah we've actually we've never done that. I don't think we've never had the matching jammies. Like everybody have on pajamas, but we never had we never had the matching ones to it. Like we would go like take pictures or something. Yeah, what um what's your favorite holiday movie? Favorite holiday movie? The first one that just came to my mind was The Grinch. I like The Grinch a lot. The original Grinch or the original, Grinch. The original Grinch? Have you seen the two the two newer versions? One was Jim Carrey, and then the other one is more recent, the animated yeah. versions. Yeah, yeah, I saw both of them. But you like the original, huh? That was the first thing that came to my mind. Yeah. Any any others that you that are on the regular rotation in the Bates house? Like Christmas, you said Christmas movies, right? Yeah, Christmas movies, yeah. Uh, um, This Christmas, like the movie, like This Christmas. Mm-hmm. Um, what else do we watch? I don't know. I mean, my, I'm sure my Home sister, Alone? My little sister. Does Home before. Alone make the rotation? Yeah, we, we watched that as a family before. But my sisters, yeah. they kind of run the show on that. So they, they'd, be they? To, <laughs> they'd be able to tell you. So what uh what's on your Christmas list for this year? Is there anything that that you have your eye on? I don't really no nah, not not I really I mean I just want to be able to get back like to the crib and you know spend some time with my family because it's been a minute since we were all together. So yeah, like when you get that time together, are you staying away from basketball? Like I just want to get away from hoops for a few days, or are you still going out and playing? And you know, you and Trey go out and play some games in the driveway, or are you trying just trying to get away for a little while? I mean, me and Trey definitely go work out because I haven't seen him in a minute, so we definitely got to get one in. But um, how have they done the last few weeks? By the way, now they, that conference play's going. Let me see their last game. They 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 lost their last game, but out of their last three, they they're two and one out of their last three games. Okay. So they they've been doing pretty well. Um, okay. Yeah. Well, cool. Well, I think uh, as we look forward to what we have coming up, you know, in the next few episodes of the Inside Scoop, I think we want to try and do a family episode 
uh, you know, while everybody's home. So we'll uh, we'll try to plan that because I think that'll be that'll be fun. Let everybody get to know some other members of the Bates family, yes, uh, which will be which will be a lot of fun. Um, so last question: You guys are playing Merrimack this weekend. Um, what's kind of your focus heading into this game? Like, what do you? You know, what do you think is the most important thing for you guys that can come out of this game? Obviously winning, obviously staying healthy, all that stuff. But like, if you can walk away from this game saying, man, we accomplished this, you know, we improved this. What do you think that thing is? I would say that we just try to win as many possessions as possible. Like take, like make it seem like every possession is like the last one of the game. I mean, just try and get a clean game, you know? Just, I mean, just come in and, you know, make sure we're, um, executing the things that we stress and work on every day in practice. I mean, taking care of the ball, defending at a high level, and, you know, make sure we sharing the sugar. I mean, moving the ball on the offensive end because, I mean, when we do, we get great shots. So I would say yeah. just, just um, I don't know, like I said, just trying to make sure we have a good possession every time down, whether it's on the defensive end or the offensive end. Absolutely. Well, good luck in that one. Good luck in the Crossroads Classic against Notre Dame after that, if we don't talk to you before then. And uh, look forward to chatting on the next episode, man. Yes, sir. Appreciate you. Cool. Thanks, Tamar. Yeah. And that will do it for this edition of the Inside Scoop with Tamar Bates. Thank you for being here and for listening and for sharing. If you're enjoying these episodes, make sure that you share it with another IU fan who you think might enjoy it. Uh, thanks to Tamar for coming and always being so well-prepared uh, and candid with his answers, really giving us a lot of insight as we go through this season. Thank you to our sponsors, Speakeasy Sales Copy, the presenting sponsor for the Inside Scoop with Tamar Bates. Make sure that you go to speakeasysalescopy.com to see how Clay can help you drive more results to your business. And our friends at Homefield Apparel, the presenting sponsor for the Back Home Network. You can go to homefieldapparel.com. Use the promo code HOME, H-O-M-E, for 15% off your entire order. And thank you to Bob Thompson for creating the theme song for the Inside Scoop. Appreciate you being here and listening. Share it far and wide if you're enjoying it. And we will talk to you on the next episode of the Inside Scoop.